Hey everyone, here it is, another video on case study reviews on this channel. So what you're going to see is a review and a review discussion video with a mentee of mine, Shefali, who has worked on this project where she's trying to introduce a loyalty program for Ajio. In this video, what I'll do is, first I'll showcase Shefali's case study to you. We'll look at what is the problem she has tried to solve, what is the solution she has actually come up with, what are some of the key decisions which she has taken as she was working on the particular project, what is the UI she has actually built, what are the multiple use cases she has actually built for, and how is it that she organized her entire file and how is that she built an entire system out of whatever UI she has built. And we'll also look at the entire process she has followed from translating a single line or problem statement to an entire solution which can almost probably work with Ajio if they are ready to implement this. Then what we'll do is, we'll jump into the review which I have given her. This review, what I've done is I've split it into multiple parts. The first part discusses about my viewpoints on how she could have improved her presentation and storytelling skills. The second part is about how she has done in her UI design and how did she utilize her tool skills. The third part is about her product and business skills. And the last part is my review on the UX process she has followed while doing this particular project. Then we move to a very interesting part. So after I gave this review, then I took a call and gave her multiple perspectives about very interesting topics which she has asked about from her review. And this discussion which I did with her gave her a very good confidence on how she can improve in doing her project, in following a better process, in doing better UI design and writing a much better case study and her confidence in appearing for interviews. And before we jump into this exciting video, please go and hit that subscribe button to keep seeing a lot of these reviews and definitely comment about what you have understood from this review and what do you want to see from the next reviews. Okay, now let's look at her case study. Hi everyone. The problem statement that I chose to work on was to implement a point-based reward system in the Ajio app. After careful analysis of the app, along with significant research, I realized that Ajio currently doesn't have a loyalty club, and hence I decided to build one. I designed screens to build the solution and provide the users with all the information they would require to utilize the reward system efficiently and with minimum discomfort. Here's a quick video showcasing my solution. I invented the Ajio Style Club and designed a loyalty club card where users could see the key information about their progress, like their current points, current level, and the points required to reach the next level to avail new benefits. I also made this card interactive where the users could access the complete loyalty club details from here itself. I designed an overlay which displayed all the benefits the user currently had access to as well as the used and the future benefits they would be able to avail. The user can easily click on various levels and access the required information. I took several other key decisions in this project. Let me take you through an important one. Loyalty card was a good idea, but now the question was where to place it. The home screen or the bottom navigation bar for easy access or the cart page where the users would see and be reminded of their points and benefits every time they went there. During research, I saw that oftentimes users add several products in the cart but would delete items or completely abandon the cart later. Upon seeing the points live on the cart page and recognizing how that very purchase would lead to their progress and added benefits, the users might get motivated and complete the purchase. This might help reduce the cart abandonment rate and increase the conversion rate leading to better numbers for the business. But space on our mobile screen is gold and the idea would not be as effective if the card wasn't the first thing the user saw on the card page. I didn't want to take away from the main purpose of the page as well. And hence, I decided to optimize space and make it as compact as possible while keeping it informative enough. This is also the reason why I gave the access to the full loyalty page overlay. The idea was to provide the users with key information and give them the freedom to click and quickly view the reward details and status through an overlay. Next, I will take you through the evolution of the loyalty card. I had to keep the card compact yet informative. So I started small with a simple progress bar and continued to add relevant information onto it. I gave level names under each stage and then decided to give the points required to reach a certain level under each name. I decided to make this progress bar dynamic, always showcasing the current status of the user. I also displayed the current points on the bar itself to gamify the card and make it more engaging. I color coded the variants to showcase the different states. The compactness of the card had to be guarded and the information needed to be displayed in a minimal and aesthetic fashion. Hence, I referenced various Gestalt's laws for displaying the information on the card wisely. 
It also took me time to understand how the numbers would work for each level to ensure that the users felt rewarded while offsetting the cost for the business with the appropriate purchase amount set for each level. I would like to take you a little bit deeper into the UI that I built. I built various states for the detail cards of each level as current, achieved and future and prototyped them to ensure easy mobility across levels. The icons for each level played an important role as well. I wanted to create a system where the symbols would be recognizable by the Ajio users. They also had to accommodate different states to showcase progress. Hence, I played around with a lot of variants. I built a comprehensive component library to achieve this desired result. There's more about managing accessibility, user testing, and building color and typography systems in here. Do check out my full case study. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. Hey, Shvali. I'm going to give you a review of multiple aspects of, you know, of product design. You're going to understand about, I'm going to review your presentation skills, your UI skills, your product skills, UX skills, and multiple things. And through which I'll be telling you, I'll be telling you about what really is working out and what is that which you can actually improve and become a even more better product design. So welcome to the review. Firstly, coming to the uh, presentation, storytelling and communication aspect of your uh, project, I am thoroughly impressed by the way you have actually told the entire story of your particular case study, the way you have actually visually represented everything, all the kinds of decisions which you have taken, right? And the way you wanted people to actually go and go through each of these elements so that they clearly understand your thought process and not even, and probably even be overwhelmed by the amount of thought process which you have kept into this project. So that is something which is pretty much uh, impressive. I can see that you have started off with uh, presenting your solution and uh, you showed a prototype over here and what you wanted to achieve. And you spoke about some of the decisions which you have taken and why though you have taken these decisions and all that stuff. And to go there, why did you do that computer research and all that stuff? So this is uh pretty much very impressive right your product skills are pretty much visible your ui skills are visible tool skills are visible how is it that you have utilized multiple ux processes to make sure that your work is very impressive so that way this is good the only thing which i should say is because of the choice of colors which you had this back black background versus some of the colors which you have used over here it's a little feeling a little overwhelming because it's difficult to read this white text white and purple text over some of these, this particular gray background. That's one thing which is a little challenging is what I felt. I have no complaints on the structure and the way you have told your particular story, but because of the choice of colors and because of text heaviness of these particular cards, at least they feel very heavy. It can be overwhelming to people or they might get lost and they were like, Hey, you know what? Not all this. Just show me what is that you have done can also come out. So I would ask you to go and reduce the amount of noise which you have, reduce, cut the amount of text and all that stuff and make it more simpler for people to understand. Do not think that people do not have any assumptions. Think about what people might assume before they look at the things and they choose the amount of text which you have. So that way you can go and improve your presentation. Also going towards the end, you could have actually add a, a conclusion towards what you have learned and I mean, there are learnings but probably in these learnings you could have presented some of the things where use it as a conclusion this is what i have done and this is what i have learned that is something which i also felt is a little bit missing like more than 100 marks for what you have done but what i'm telling can make your uh, case study and the presentation even more better now coming to the you should also one more thing about presentation is you need to also optimize this for mobile view and I say you have done a pretty decent job in making sure people can view what you have done in the mobile view. This is something which is pretty much impressive. I can clearly see your work. I can clearly see those screens. But there are few places, let us say these things, which like the text is very difficult to read. So that's something which I want you to just check these things like impossible. I know you just want to just give a map of everything. I understand, but probably just make it very clear about that because you kept it over here. That means people would want to consume and it is not easy to consume. But other than that, these things are also pretty much fine. I think on mobile also people can understand and read them. 
so few places you'll have to really balance it pretty well right also definitely special mention to the way you have used gifs and all that and the way you've shown the before and after this is what it is what's happening and i try to optimize the space and all that stuff and how is it that you have added the loyalty card the way you have shown that particular transition is something which is really impressive the, the the way you have utilized these animations to showcase the work which you have done is pretty impressive okay coming to your ui and tool skills okay let's take them separately first is ui skills definitely a very good job i should say you can get a, a 7 out of 10 i wouldn't say 10 out of 10 i'll tell you why as well definitely a very good job in terms of the the way you have thought about how to handle this particular ui the way the interactions are let's say you have used a tab system people can scroll and all this up this way it is fine but visual skills when it comes to your pure visual skills your choice of colors your choice of the fonts the spacing these things need to be improved i feel let's say this icon let's say this exact thing the tab which is moving this is not really a, a very popular pattern the spacing is a little off let's say this ajio style club this the spacing is off these level shake and these pointer space like there is no relationship between these spaces so you can go and understand a little bit more about gestalt principles and look at practice go practice how spacings are done in multiple products and therefore you can become better at spacing right you need to have a system for your spacing right it should have a meaning what all space why did you use let's say this and you want to use a padding right what dictates that particular padding how is it consistent from multiple other paddings which are used across the product that's when it really looks good or even this font and of course you don't have a lot of um, font is basically coming from your trying to respect the design system of ajio i understand so you don't have a choice but especially spacing is where you can really drastically improve and yes you went totally on the dark mode while the entire app is actually uh, on the whitest side on the lighter side you went dark mode to this particular feature i can of course as long as you have a reasoning for why you have done that now that's fine right but yes so look at this uh, this particular padding over here is feels a little inconsistent so you need to really give this attention to detail and improve your ui right but coming to your tool skills the way you have utilized figma to achieve this man that is really crazy really very good work done i can see the kind of components and variants which you have done and the internal prototyping which you have done to achieve this entire prototype right the way you have like very good very good the way you have used these component properties and defined all these things the way you have showcased that you create created an entire color system over here mind blowing seriously mind blowing yeah very good effort very good effort this is something which is like readily acceptable in a company right if this kind of tools cuz you are also using component properties and like you made an entire library this is very hireable skill i'm telling you you showcase this review to whom or whichever company you want to apply to they will really realize the amount of effort which you have put in and the amount of skill which you have in using the tool in this case that is figma right yes so overall in your ui and tool skills tool skills are pretty good ui ui skills are also good the visual skills are what i need you to really focus on right now coming to the next thing that is the product skills now i really liked that your product skills are pretty much visible when you have actually presented your completed research the way you have considered this entire flow and try to solve this particular problem so let's go to your problem statement that is you want to implement a reward system right a point based system in this ajio right now what i felt is for a like for a fresher for a uh, for a challenge which was just 48 hours implementing this much is really good no doubt you are in this particular cart area you are coming up with multiple options the way you have gone micro instead of macro instead of multiple touch points you have gone micro into this particular feature and all the practical multiple variations which have come up with right here all the kinds of variations and the way you have thought about the product this is pretty much impressive right if if you work with a product manager they will they would really love all the use cases they can really write their brd 
very very well or whatever product documentation they would write all these variations and all that stuff is something which is really impressive in that particular uh, way now but what i felt is you have also shown multiple iterations in the way you have thought that is also good but what i felt is you can actually go and look at even more multiple products and i know you have tried to understand patterns on how people are doing the point based system and came with some ideas over here but if i really have to evaluate you along with a, i know it's not fair but even if i have to evaluate you with along with two years or four years experience designer right a product designer i would say you need to go and look at multiple other products and understand how what is a rewarding experience you probably can go dive deep into understanding what is rewarding for customers how do we actually go and understand business models over there money is obviously constrained right you can't really spend a lot of things on rewarding but what can actually make people really rewarded so can you come up with some new models by yourself which can actually go deeper into understanding how people feel rewarded and yet spend lesser money from the business side i really want you to think in this particular as why because this is the idea which probably is one of those first and second ideas which can come if i want to implement a point based evolve system which is fine which is pretty standard which is something which can be understood by a lot of people but can you think of gamification at a next level is the question which 200 marks out of 100 on your current level but as i said at a senior level of 3 to 4 years of experience this is what they would they would bring in the experience in going a little deeper into the journey understand what are all the points which can be rewarding and then coming up with more ideation in terms of and going and picking those patterns from probably other places not just reward programs on how people keep get gamified and then create that particular model and use it over here this is the next level of going and doing this particular feature so that way you can go and improve your product skills or else man mind blown or the way you have thought of a particular product a company can totally rely on you just giving a problem statement to go and build a product that's how good this is now the next thing is coming to your review on your utilizing ux processes that's where i would say you are still let's say a 5 out of 10 yet because obviously you have had only 48 hours of time and all that stuff i know you are very iterative you try to go and test it as well and where is that let me just go and yes you also tested it you also go went and uh, try to get some feedback and make some changes but what i felt is you can go and understand the heart of ux ux process a little bit better and utilize them to actually make yourself more efficient now let's say you understand the process of journey mapping then you could have actually come up with a better journey of how people can go and feel rewarded see when i say ux process test doesn't just mean that you just go simply go and do some research and come back and research 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 and come back that's not what i mean you want to go and ideate and come up with a better product now how does it happen you can use your own common sense but ux frameworks provide you that sauce to actually go and improve your own common sense as i said journey mapping let's say there are multiple ideas over there probably you could have used affinity mapping to actually come up with multiple different product buckets on how you would want to solve the problem in this way i would say i shouldn't say 5 out of 10 i think you should give a, get a 7 out of 10 in terms of ux processes but understanding the heart of ux processes you can actually intelligently more intelligently use this process to come up with a better mature product is what i felt two examples and the other thing is you went and showed some low fidelity wireframes over here it's not really making sense because like nobody wireframes just one or two things there might have been a lot of rough work a lot of ideation which you might have done on your notebook to show that this has the risk of being called out as some artificial wireframing just dumped over here just because you wanted to show something right now and even like these users putting these photos and stuff like that i would say what is it what are your if you've done a usability testing what are your insights how are you converting those insights into your product that is something which is not really being seen over here you have done it you represented it but you have not put enough work over there okay, that's why i'm giving just a 6 or 7 out of 10 in utilizing ux process in a very effective manner 
obviously special mention to your adherence to accessibility so that way your ui skills are definitely very good and i also liked how you in a non textbook manner wanted to explain that this whole project is showcasing is really going in a double diamond approach or more than double diamond it's a diamonded approach where there is a lot of diverging and converging but in sort of just this diagram probably could you have summarized the entire project drawn references from what you have done and illustrated it on this particular diagram then it would have made more sense because until i read your entire case study i'll not be able to understand what you mean by this that way it also act as a very good conclusion to your particular case study as well yes i also like that you have shown future scope and all that stuff yes a lot of amazing effort put in doing this entire product very impressed the way you have made the solution the way you made the animations the way we used it all the skills so more than 100 marks for you know your skills right now but if you really want to like, i i am right now going and comparing yourself with a senior designer out there for them all i need you to do is go and understand more products look at more products understand ux processes a little bit more so that you can become you can get more product mature ideas even more product mature ideas and you can be on par with senior designers out there right and yes go and practice some of the visual design basics really understand how fonts work icons work colors work spacings work so that even the same card also is visually really good with that shifali you're one gem of a person i should say when it comes to product design very proud of your work and i hope all the feedback which i have given you really help you improve and become a even more very good proud designer and a very impactful proud designer and a very proud student of mine thank you very much shifal welcome to the next person on to the what do you call that in the court they have that thing no where people will step in hearing <laughs> sorry hearing but what do you call that exact thing i don't know <laughs> so firstly congratulations on completing this project and not just the project completing the entire level 2 with a lot of sincerity i think that is what really can be really seen you're there in volunteering that's fair but the amount of sincerity which you have shown even in completing all those modules doing it and being very sincerely there the transformation can be seen in your work i think that is something which i'm very proud of where else will results even come from yeah <laughs> thank you grief i was literally after watching my feedback no abhi in the evening i was thinking like if i wouldn't have done the volunteering probably i wouldn't have had the guts to actually take so much chances so many chances in my pdc so yeah, i exactly. like i am also amazed like i think i really put my heart and soul i did everything what was coming my way absolutely and, very that is uh, i learned a lot that sincerity is really coming out in your work amazing of course we'll show you our case study but could i say it chefali yeah please <laughs> yeah so congratulations chefali also got a job offer yeah. like that <laughs> one of the most textbook results you do pdc you submit it you showcase your case study someone reaches out to you you get a job offer over <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so good congratulations to chefali probably you can share those details with us later yeah so but anyway okay so yes so you might have seen your review so let me know what questions you have and obviously i also have a lot of pointers for context she has written a very very good case study guys amazingly of course in if you watch the review there will be things which they can make better and all that stuff but it was so good that i actually started comparing her with senior designers rather than comparing her with freshers right because the kind of product decisions she has done the way she has come up with all the thinking and all that was pretty good ui not ui sorry ui is pretty good visuals visual skills is something which is let's improve on that the spacing the icons the the color usage and all that stuff i spoke in detail in your review i think those are the things which need improvement but your ui skills and your tool skills are like you can start giving tutorials to people now that's what they are <laughs> yeah go ahead ask your doubts shefali 
So I really loved what you said about having a reward system, which was non-cost incentive, right? So I think that is something I will really work on. I mean, my mind is already working. So, yeah, yeah. so that is not a simple problem to solve. Yeah. So I'm able to tell because I myself worked, it's been eight months I've been working on a reward system and this is the biggest battle. How to make it, how to make a reward system in such a way that it is not cost intensive to the business. Users feel rewarded and the business doesn't shell out a lot of money. That's the thing about a reward system, right? I mean, see, ultimately, why do we even have a gamified reward system in place? If you think of it, you already have your offerings, right? And people are not buying those things. People need to be gamified within the system to go and make those purchase decisions and all that stuff, right? And if you see both the user side of the reward system and the business side of the reward system, now let's take the business side. The business wants these higher conversions and higher retention, right? They want more people to feel gamified and use and buy the products. Mm -hmm. That's why that's one thing. But what is on the user side? Why do you need to make them feel rewarded? If you go and do your research, go and talk to people, you'll understand there's a lot of gaps in which how people consider that they do not feel enough rewarded for doing those particular actions as well. People already have these voice VOCs or what we call it, right? People mm -hmm. voice out these concerns that I am doing this, but I'm not getting anything. You're getting the product, but what else? Ajio should do more. Mm -hmm. So, and what more? What do they want? They want certain kinds of acknowledgement. They want to stand out separately. They want to know that they are someone who is special from other people who are buying more or buying less. Mm -hmm. These are things actually coming out from people more than we tricking them or anything, right? Mm -hmm. So a genuine reward system understands more about how do people feel rewarded in a genuine manner and what do they actually want and brings those particular pointers and gamifies the system. In this way, the load to the business is lesser because sometimes even making people feel that they are this elite or icon and style more than actually giving out more number of points for elite right itself can act as a what like you are now elite mm -hmm. and you are eligible for these things showcasing that they are elite is already rewarding for a lot of people not just giving higher cash back yeah or pointers so, so this is one example right of course we can't go very specific into this exact idea but in this way there there'll be a lot of other insights which you can get right if you go and understand behaviors of how people feel rewarded for that what you would have done is made a journey, journey map, yeah. right? I told in the Abhishekas review also, right? Hmm. If at all you made a journey map and understood how is it that you can, at each point of how a person is taking that purchase decision, right? Or probably even within the cart, right? You have only selected the cart. Within the cart, if they have to go and make that particular decision, right? What are all the things which people are thinking? How do they feel that the feeling of rewarded. How do you, how does how does it happen? Make that particular journey. Write down all those thoughts, feelings, things which are there. What are the blockers, opportunities, and all that stuff. If you write those things down, you will get all these particular ideas. And hmm. once you have this journey, you go and do your research. We did not do primary research in this particular project, right? But hmm. the journey can trigger you to go and do a lot of primary research. Go and talk to people about what are the ways in which they feel rewarded. Once you get those insights you will obviously be able to go and get much better ideas over here. This is one idea. That's fine. Yeah. What are the much better ideas about how they feel that they are special, how they feel that they are getting rewarded, right? A yeah. lot of ideas will come. And then when you go and look at competitors, these ideas will also be there in some other form, hmm. right? Not just the competitor. So see, when you did your competitor research, you directly went and looked at reward-based system in H&M. That yeah. is one way of doing computer research. But if you do a journey and understand patterns, similar problems being solved in multiple other places, not just reward systems, but people feeling rewarded hmm. Hmm. in other ways can also be found out because you're now looking for those things. Yeah. Here you're only looking for a reward-based system. So that's the only thing which you are, you're studying in your computer research. But if you go deeper towards feeling rewarded and feeling special, then you have a lot of space to actually go and explore and get those ideas. 
Yeah. So, yes, again, so, as a fresher, this is impossible to get here. This review is totally to a to a, an experienced person. Hmm. But I only have that to tell you. Like, I mean, you have nailed it as a fresher. So this, <laughs> and I don't even have to tell you. The moment you got a result, you proved it by yourself, right? So, but yes, so this is your next, like, now this is your goal, right? Yeah. Product maturity is your goal. And obviously improving your visual skills as a part of it. If you really improve your visual skills over there, very easy also, right? Because I myself can clearly see by that small spacings and all, like see the, this number is literally touching this circle. It's very uncomfortable. That 5K to is, I don't know why it's going off. <laughs> it's taking off. I kind of made a animated thing. <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, that's, that's probably still fine. Hmm. But by the way, even when you have designed this, you might have realized that this is not really scalable because the starting point and ending point of this number, because this is coming to the center and where does the center lie? What if the number of points are, you might have used auto layout to keep that thing in the center, but where does it start? What if it starts from zero? What if it starts at very high value? What if this point system is tomorrow scalable to a lot of points? Like, let us say, what is like lakhs of points? Then what do you do? Right? All these ideas can come. So I did kind of start, I said like people will get 100 rupees when they, 100 points when they start. And then in the future scope also, I said that there would be like another tier for somebody who passes the elite level. So right. I kind of tried, but I do understand the complication behind it. Also having yes. a dynamic, yeah. So Scale is very important. I'll tell you one of the problems which we have with these kind of things. So what happens is when you introduce this program, a lot of people will be in pro. In six months, a lot of people will be in icon. Yeah. What do you do now? Will you, ex will you keep expanding icon, elite and all? That means there should be expiry of these points. How mm -hmm. do you handle that expiry? Yeah. How do you handle refresh of people going up and down? How do you keep them in that variable reward? Hmm. Again, I know this is too much for a fresher, uh, but these are all mature product decisions and discussions which you can have. Definitely yeah. read the book Hooked. It will definitely help you because when I said variable reward, it really talks about a lot of gamifying experiences the book will really help you coming back just to your day and visual skills right the spacings thinking about that particular scale and the limits right i have only have this limit to this limit over here how yeah. do i put the scalable information over there thinking about these aspects can make you build better systems mm. right and simple things like this is all like this thing is very suffocating right because uh, a little, little more amount of padding. I don't know if you have done this or someone else might have no, done I, I did it. <clears throat> yeah. So that is actually a problem that I need to ask you. That's a question. Because I was, my main constraint was space. And I wanted things to be visible also. And I wanted them to be as con like, like small as possible. Correct. So, yeah. So probably I should Why have should, come up with a smaller. Go to the screen. Huh. Why should the style club ingress be inside this particular widget? I did that. If you go in the evolution, no, I did that also, but then that was not looking nice. So I kind of included <laughs> it. Yeah, here, here. Just go up a little bit. Yeah. Just go up. The style club has to have some meaning, right? On top of it, you have a chevron. On top of it, you have an icon over here. Yeah. The reason why it is failing is because the chevron was is not even visible. Mm. Because it's too much in proximity with that particular icon which you have over here. Where is that particular card? Yeah. Right. This icon is too much in proximity with that particular chevron which, which you have over there. Right. So yeah. firstly, I don't think it's a very wise thing to do a geo and style club in separate lines. I don't know why you're trying to save the horizontal space. Probably you could have iterated on putting a geo and style club in, in horizontally. A geo and style club could have come one after the other. Right. And mm -hmm. you could save the space and that style club, that logo coming in the end or the icon coming in the end. I don't know. It's kind of disturbing, mm. right? Or probably the entire illustration basically gets a better padding. Even then, it would have been better. Okay. So these are purely visual calls. Yeah. Right? I know you're trying to save space, but that's the point, no? Minimalistic design means it saves space. Mm. Understanding <laughs> what information, how can information be presented and communicated in with as much less information as possible, making people take a, remaining parts as assumptions. That is what minimalistic design is. Yeah, yeah. So if you have this particular thought process, then you can make your visuals more minimalistic. 
then you can take these trade off decisions and then your ui will look very good yeah cool. in essence what i'm trying to say is you want to make your screen look very good you need to really understand product you do not understand product you cannot just by going and taking a call a class about typography or iconography you'll not you'll, you can make it you can just go and throw things but how to meaningfully do it how hmm. to still save space how to still put this particular wizard and still have that meaning out of it all these things will come into picture hmm. that yeah. means you will have to understand product at a much better level hmm. right? yeah so that's the thing but one more biggest thing is i asked you that question in the review also you turned all of this into the dark mode and all that stuff which is just fine it's a smart decision but uh, i don't know, you need to check that if i am working in ajio i immediately ask you that hey you have done everything in dark and yeah. you everything in a light or not right? so what i did was anudeep i took their cta because i saw in other apps that uh, usually loyalty club stand out from their normal uh, color scheme so because, because of various reasons but yeah i understand Okay. How much to stand out? What if we want to introduce another program over here? This is a loyalty club. That's fine. Now, what if this is ignored just as a banner because everything else banner blindness is a big issue. You might have known this. Go and look at it. Actually, lot of uh, let's say Abhishekha has come up with this uh, in the discovery stage. Yeah, she made this banner as an ingress mm -hmm. point, right? A lot of people. It's known that banner blindness is so much that small ingresses, text ingresses, have better accessibility, better visibility, and discoverability than big banners on the face. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I won't expect you guys to know all these things. This is in. These are not even tested for a fresher. Don't even worry. Mm. But I'm still telling you. So, I mean, what if they don't think an interactable element, and what if it's just a banner? so yeah for that reason i'll have to make it make the style match with the other interactable elements which are there on the screen so that i understand that this part is informational this part is interactive hmm. yeah how do you think that is something i came across in the user testing so the users hmm. could not understand that it was interactable and that they could actually click on it to go towards what and i had the arrow outside pehle but then i kept it inside just because <laughs> i wanted to make sure that okay this is the go back now <laughs> yeah 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 but i okay. get awesome okay. another question i had was yeah. the pictures you said were text heavy so i kind of tried to keep a balance between the pictures but yeah some of these pictures because of the inverted colors Oh. It's very difficult to read huge amount of text on a dark background. It's a known pattern. Okay, yes. Which I told you in your review also. Yeah, right. I mean, I I tried to match the color story with what I had done. So, Correct. But... Is that required? Is the question yeah. you need to ask, right? Yeah. Probably the illustrations could have been in dark, and the remaining part text could have been in with white background, and then with a darker font color. Okay. That way you could have like probably these boxes can be in dark because there's some information which you want to convey. with focus mm. and decrease amount of text and these things could have been in in white whiter background right mm. so by principle the reason why it doesn't feel good it feels very overwhelming is because our eyes cannot process it immediately it's not natural to read a large amount of text on dark backgrounds yeah okay so can see all this right it's mm. the same thing kushagra has done and that was really good right mm. so even with inverted colors but of course his yeah. choice of colors was pretty bad but but with inverted colors this whole thing can be processed in a much better manner so right? it's easy on the eyes yes when yeah. you present now that's different now this is a, this is a document which i'm reading and scanning when you present it on large screens let us say when you're giving a portfolio presentation that time people use darker backgrounds because there is focus mm. that so actually there is so much you can read about it the question backs goes back to I don't know if you have watched this in the workshop. I have this video on why Netflix and all these people use dark backgrounds. Yeah, so there is so much actually. If you see, most TV interfaces have dark backgrounds, but mobile interfaces, right? Where there is a lot of text, they prefer to keep light, light. backgrounds, right? Wherever there is focus required, which I call it in that Netflix wala drill exercise, saying that designing for focus. Wherever there is focus required. you use a darker background and highlight the particular element 
wherever you want people to consume a lot and read a lot of stuff you need to turn it into a wider background and give put the text okay so this is very interesting read about these particular things right yeah so, so but if your entire theme is dark then you'll have to be very low on text and be very interactive and very that's why if you see cred and all they have very less text because they know that people cannot read a lot of text on that right mm -hmm. and places where they have to communicate text or communicate some logos and all that they invert it yeah so yeah that's amazing insight yeah yes <laughs> okay awesome. uh, mamuni awesome. yeah. <laughs> two more things actually yeah one is i didn't put i made a video separately and i posted it separately should i have put it in the like as a whole at the end like in a conclusion what, what, what? what video a video it's on linkedin it's not in the case oh, that video i watched correct ah, that oh, video oh. so should i have put it in the end because a lot of people might just see the case study might never go there as a conclusive kind of a thing you can put it in the starting as well those who are interested to watch the video can watch the video Actually, I didn't put it in. Other than that, thought, as I said, right? That time also I said this. Can you break that video into multiple parts and put them as GIFs within your case study itself to increase, you know, to put your case, so put your storytelling in a better manner. I know you have done all this also in the video. Yeah. Probably video is not even required here then. Yeah. That's what I thought, so I didn't put it actually. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Then probably in the end you can put saying that why don't you go to my LinkedIn post and watch this video or watch this video and also go to my LinkedIn post or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Is, so yes but people wouldn't watch an entire video in your case study especially when they are trying to scan it that will not happen yeah but probably providing a link or something yeah. Yeah, if they would want to if someone would want to see more they're so interested they can go and click on it but in general a recruiter wouldn't even immediately click on it but they would probably consume it on linkedin that's how they'll yeah. reach you. right oh. there it makes sense again <laughs> Here also journey mapping, multiple touch points, design thinking. Yeah. How do I get attention of people at what point? LinkedIn is calling for attention. Case study is explanation. Once they have your attention, now the case study is telling you how you are a designer and how did you solve a problem. So hmm. both need different kind of treatments. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I had a lot of questions about UX processes that you mentioned, but yeah. that journey mapping and everything already you've explained. So I kind of got that. My last question is, how do I get a geo to see this? Hi. <laughs> Probably that's why the video helps. Yeah, it, that's a tricky thing because uh, a geo has also replied. People in a geo have replied to previous people who have done their case studies. That way I say that people and they just tagged a geo. But yeah, probably your video is, you have tagged a geo in your video also in the LinkedIn. Uh, I don't think I've tagged a geo in the video, but in the case study I have. Ah, tag it on your LinkedIn. <laughs> Uh, now it's a little late because you've already kept that. You can also tag now, but you can take snippets out of it and repost them on LinkedIn and write down your learnings and say, hey, what if Ajio has a loyalty program? Let's look at, or let's say, let, I try to make this loyalty program, but let's look at multiple ways in which I have iterated, right? Mm -hmm. So you showcase the iteration is starting and this is how I've iterated and then put that point and just make a different post out of it. This also I've been talking to multiple people. Break down your case study, break down multiple decisions, make small snippets of video, put them on LinkedIn and write the story of how you took the one particular decision. Be it your critical decisions, be it small, the UI changes which you've done, or even the tool skills, the areas where you've used the tools. This is how I have broken this into, like this is how I've used auto layout. This one small snippet itself can go as a LinkedIn post. Yeah. So this is how I built a system when I try to, this the entire component library is what I've built when I actually built, did a project for Ajio. So there'll be a proper zooming in, zooming out of this entire thing in a video. Put that full case study link there in the comments or whatever. So in that mm -hmm. way, break down your case study into multiple posts and grab attention of people, which people have something to learn from it. Now, if you showcase your component library, there's so much to learn from this component library. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, in your text is telling the reasoning you did a component library for why and all that. So they can learn from it, from your experience. And the video is basically catching attention. They would want to learn more. So they'll come to your case study. Yeah. So that way you will start getting more virality and you will get more number of posts and your profile is more warm. Right now you just made one post. Your profile is only warm to that particular post, but yeah. right. It can be more warmer. 
then keep posting more in context of what you have done yeah okay go ahead yeah, yeah. that's it awesome so thank you very much uh, shefali yeah